Scott and I, I was, we were both in different bands. And uh, at the time the band I, I was in, I was running this open jam. And that's where I met Scott. So we got together and uh, said, hey, let's get, let's get a band going. And our ideas were almost similar, you know. Uh, we wanted to keep it traditional, but have a lot of changes as well, you know. Like, we already know blues is already sad and stuff, but we wanted to do something different, you know, a little bit. And, uh, and he was game for it, I was game for it, and we got together and next thing you know, things started coming together. What we, what we really did was uh, Tony and I would hang out for breakfast and, uh, and, and talk and have these, these kind of brainstorming meetings and, uh, and, and try and decide what kind of band we were gonna put together. And, uh, and, and that's, <laughs> that's what we did. We kind of, uh, I always tell people I put together an all-star band and uh, they let me play with them, so it's great. Scott and I were also involved with another little side project. And he says to me, I think I want to start a blues band. So two weeks later, we're in the studio recording the album. That, <laughs> that was the fun part for me. Just I had no clue what was happening. Show up for the studio. And uh, we just did it kind of things on the fly at that point. Yeah, I pretty much uh, met Scott through uh, the open mics. I met Tony uh, well before that. I was playing in a band and Tony sat in with us and we always had kind of a rapport but uh, when they started to put together you know the whole band I says well I'm game for it if you want me to tag along I says I'm there. I was playing at various open jams in uh, kind of Joliet area and I ran into the gym and he mentioned that they were looking for another guitar player, so you know, I went down and met up with these guys at a jam, and we gelled, and you know, here, here we are today.
or fretting. I like Stratocaster when it comes to slide and open tunings. I like to use a, a Gibson SG just because um, you can reach all the way up to like the 17th, 18th fret and you know, it'll sound, sound great. And as far as amps go, um, I like Fender amps. Um, I like Victoria amplifiers. You know, my friend Mark Bayer, he's president of that company. So, I mean, really I just like a little bit of distortion, but you know, underlying clean tones. So each note can be heard. I play different, different harmonicas, <clears throat> but I, if I would have a preference, I, I prefer uh, the golden melody. Uh, the way it looks, it's kind of old school looking and it's more airtight. But um, I got a, I got different kinds and still trying to learn how to fix them myself. And uh, that's that's been a little battle for me, but um, I'm getting there. And uh, I use an amp Fender 59 Bassman, a reissued one with a bullet microphone to it. And that's what my gear is. Primarily uh, because uh, Nick is more of a Strat guy, um, in, in this band I stick more with my Gibsons. Um, a uh, couple of guys out in the scene, notably uh, Al Spears was one who told me, you gotta play a 335, you gotta play a 335. And, uh, and I finally did, and, and uh, I really like a 335. Um, now, with what we were doing today, I was playing a Les Paul, which uh, is a recent acquisition. Uh, I really like that. Amplifiers, uh, as Nick mentioned, Victoria. Uh, Mark Bayer is an absolute genius. Love his stuff. Um, and, and there is no endorsement, uh, you know, but I still tell everyone about how, how much I love playing through his amps because they just, they, they, they are what Fender amps should be. They are what they were back when they were first built. And uh, Mark, Mark is, is a, he's a player more than he's a, a you know, businessman, I guess I would say, because he's really listening to a lot of that tonal stuff. So Victoria amps, uh, Gibson guitars, uh, Fender, um, as far as pedals, I keep it pretty simple. I, I use an OCD and use a volume pedal just to kind of control a little bit of my output, and that's really it. For the most part, with Mojo, I am currently using this Music Man Stingray bass. I also have a Carvin five-string bass I love, and uh, as for an amp right now, we're using Hard Key. <laughs> <laughs> And we would love an endorsement. I have no shame. <laughs> How do you spell but, that? Yeah. <clears throat> Capital H, A R T K E. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's a, it's a it's a great amp for what I do with the fellas. I mean, it's uh, you know the tone is good and uh, it's a lot lighter than some of the other combos I've used over the years. So I'm very pleased with that. The kit I'm using at this shoot is my favorite, he's a DW, uh, all Zildjian uh, K custom symbols. This, this is what I like, what I like with the Ks or the smoky sound. Uh, my other kit I have, it depends, you know, if I'm playing a smaller gig, it will be a, a Yamaha kit, just a four piece kit. I, I, I used to go with the bigger kits, but I went back to four pieces instead of 10 million tom-toms around. Uh, that kit is nice, you know, easy to get in, easy to get out. I normally use uh, Zildjian A custom cymbals with that one. And if I'm playing jazz or if I'm playing in a, a bar that's small, I have a little custom-made jazz bebop kit, and that's with an 18-inch bass drum. 12 and 14 times and then I'll use the case because you know that's nice smoky uh, warm sound out of the cymbals.
Have you ever met a woman with sexy Met a woman with sexy eyes. She got a sexy smile and everything about that woman. She's gonna try.
I love the way you talk, baby The way you whisper Sweet things in my ear Telling me what you want me to do, baby I just want to take my time With you Cause I ain't never met a woman, baby Quite a sexy Some of that slow blues for me, Nick. Come on. your high heels on, baby, the way you flip your hair 
and look your best. Cause I ain't never met a woman, baby, quite as sexy and lovely as you, baby.
No, the CD was, uh, when, when I first started the band, one of the things that I wanted to do was capture that, that energy when a band first gets together. There's the first couple weeks when a band gets together that there's, you know, it, everyone's still feeling each other out, and, and that's kind of the energy I think that we captured on there. Um, we had a, a phenomenal keyboard player sitting in with us who was also the engineer, and that's Bobby Scamacci. Um, there's some great key sounds on there. It was actually a, another guitarist, uh, not not Nick on that one, um, which I, I almost wish I would have known you then, because <laughs> yeah. So we're we're um, you know we're we're on that one and, and starting to look into the studio for the next uh, next cut because I think as a band we've we've evolved quite a bit over the last two years. We've we've gone into a lot more um, a lot more of a funky direction. Uh, there is some funky stuff on there, but there's also a little more of a traditional feel. But all in all, I think it's a it's a great disc and and very well produced. Mm -hmm. uh, it does not sound like a like a basement album. You know, we actually went into a studio and had it done and had it professionally mastered. And so the very beginning to the Maxwell Mojo, the reference to Maxwell Street. You know, and that's a. Uh, uh, something we still carry on as well, uh, even though, let's say the direction is a little more funky now than what we were. Uh, it's still very good. Well, that's, you know, actually that's something I want to touch on. Um, people ask all the time, well, where did you get the name Maxwell Mojo? And what it was, uh, Tony and I, when we were talking about the band and, and, and trying to build it, and we said, well, we want to try and, and show you know a couple of different sides of the same coin and and so let's show the traditional that maxwell street that's where electric blues was was born you know mm -hmm. through through guys like muddy waters let's do that but then you have mojo which is that undescribable magic it's that it's that vibe it's that coolness that um that magic that you know i think we as a group really kind of espouse it's just you know we love playing and and you know, I always, I always tell people that I don't get paid to play guitar, I get paid to move the gear. <laughs> and, and so, but it's that time when you're actually playing, when you're on stage, that's the magic, that's, that's the mojo. Man.